So here's how I created the mounting hardware. This is the antenna mounting hardware that I customized for my 2015 Chevrolet Colorado and it might work for your truck as well if you have a tonneau cover and you want to place the antenna where I placed mine between the cab and the bed. Anyway, what you need to do first or what I did is find some kind of metal bracket or plate here that I got at Lowe's. If you look at figure one, this is basically just a tie plate for wood to wood connections that I found in the construction aisle and it's uh, only $2.58. After that, and then in figure two, that's the actual NMO mount that I originally bought, thinking I could sandwich that between the tonneau cover rail and butt it up against the cab, but there's just not enough space there to connect everything. So I needed some kind of customized piece of metal that I could bend into the right dimensions. So that's why I had to combine that NMO mount with something I bought at Lowe's. And in figure three, that's what the plate looks like. It's more or less pretty long, but anyway, this works. In figure four, I drew lines on it. I measured the dimensions that I wanted for the bend. So I kind of put this on the truck to see what it would look like. And the big square at the top will fit onto the truck bed. And then the skinnier section at the bottom will just house my NMO mount. So on figure five, you can see that the holes perfectly line up. So there was no added drilling or extra drilling that I had to do. I just needed to screw them together. So on this slide here, I've got a lot more pictures of what I did in figure six. That's the bracket that I placed into the vise where the lines are bent. And so I used a hammer to bend it over. And then just to make it really good creases, I put it on the floor of my garage and flattened it more a little bit against the ground. And then in figure seven, that's just what it looks like standing up or how it's going to look like in the truck. So that big wider area on the bottom of the plate there is going to be screwed into the truck bed. And then in figure eight, I just am checking the fitment and everything. So it's looking good so far. And then in figure nine, I have it actually installed. Also in figure 10 there, you can see I've already bolted it down or screwed it in with some self-tapping metal screws. So it went through the bed liner and then straight into the truck bed there. So I only had eight in a packet that I bought. So I have four on each one because I made two of these. And then in figure 11, you can see how it looks like prior to installing it on the truck. And then in figure 12, you get a better idea of how I have it installed. And then in figure 13, you can see it after it's finally installed, everything put together, the antenna, the the cable, the bolts and everything. And then I was able to slide in the tonneau cover rail in there. And then now it looks good. Everything fits perfectly fine. So there's a lot of clearance or plenty of clearance that I need. And that does the job for me. So I couldn't find an exact mount online for this particular setup that I needed. So I had to get creative and make something customized. So here you can see how I developed my antenna mounts. And I did check them with the multimeter. The ground is pretty good. Less than one ohm on both of those. And I have it routed in through here behind or between the, um, the bed and the cab, which behind these seats, I'll show you here in a little bit. You put these seats down and then you take off this plastic covering here and then you get behind the insulation and you can actually see some air vents where you can route the antenna cable. So here in the Chevy Colorado, what I wanna do is route the antenna cables from the outside inside here. So it's really easy here on the Chevrolet Colorado. All you need to do is fold down the front seat here. And then what you can see here is this plastic plate here that covers the back and just slowly and carefully peel that back. This slides up by the way, give you a little bit more slack. Now I'm gonna bring the camera over here to show you guys what it looks like back here. There are some air vents that makes it quite easy for you to access the outside to the end. Okay, here's another view. So if you pull this back, you can see some of this insulation in here, right? You have a little bit of a, a clip right here that you just need to kind of tug on. It's like, like a Christmas tree lock. So this is what it looks like. Don't lose that. It's a little Christmas tree thing there and uh, it goes right in there. Move this out of the way a little bit. Here is where that Christmas tree clip went. So here you can kind of pull the back the insulation a little bit. And these are your outside vents going down here about halfway through these are your vents to the outside and that's where you can route that antenna cable so i'm going to do that real quick and show you guys how easy that is all right so i have two nmo cable mounts that i'm going to be using in the back of the truck so just take these and kind of give yourself enough slack to let them hang kind of on the ground maybe so you can grab them from the outside so i'm just going to leave a little bit of slack in there and then grab it with a, like a coat hanger hanger pull from the outside, from the side. This one's gonna be a little bit tougher because it's all one piece, this kind of cable mount that I got. There we go. Easy. All right, 
Hopefully you guys can see what I just did there. Okay, so they are down in there pretty good. All right, so I got the coat hanger here. We're gonna go ahead and try and grab them with the hooks here. Okay, got one out. And a really good reason to go through these air vents is because it does have those flaps as well to still kind of keep moisture out and you're still not gonna be pinching these wires or drilling anything for, uh, for the car. And here is the other one. There you go, there you have it. Now all you gotta do is just take these and plug them into your antenna mounts here. I think you guys can handle that. I'll just go ahead and do those off camera. And then I routed the antenna cable up through here underneath the headliner here, all the way underneath there, all the way into the front and down to my A-pillar. Right here, for example, you can see I've got the wire through here. The antenna cable for the GMRS just continues down underneath the dash and over to the radio. And then this is just the antenna pigtail that I have for the handheld Biofang UV82 ham radio which seems to work pretty good. This is gonna be my temporary setup until I get a more mobile setup later on once I figure out what I want. And then this cool little thing here in the Colorado, they have this little slot here. So I just bought this little L bracket for construction and then I glued on another flat piece so I can put another radio or maybe in the future just hang up a microphone or something. So just to show you real quick, I have put the MXT575 behind this flat screen radio that I have, this Tesla style screen from Phoenix Automotive, and it's flat in the back, so it actually gives you a lot of uh, room in the back to put the MXT575. So there you go, you can see the back panel of this radio, which is super nice and thin, different from the OEM one, and so when you upgrade to this, or if you upgrade to this, you can actually get the MXT to fit in there pretty good, the MXT575. So next I just need to connect the power and the ground, the antenna, and figure out how I'm gonna route the microphone to it. Okay, so it's a little bit crazy to see here, I guess, but what you see here is the antenna cable right here routed through this slot. And then I routed the red and black power cable to the back there so that it's more or less staying away from uh, ignition sources and away from the antenna, hope, hopefully not creating any kind of interference. So after I connected everything like that, then I'll just go ahead and install this in the middle real quick. All right, there's the MXT beautifully sat in there sideways. It's gonna to have to go in sideways because lengthwise it's a little bit too long and then it will touch the back of my radio. Don't mind some of those extra connections. Those go to the radio or the, stere the car stereo. Okay, so then we have the microphone, which it's gonna come out here on the corner. And as you can see, I created a little notch here with a round little file or a rod file that seems to be, that just so happens to be the perfect diameter as the wire on the microphone. So that's gonna come out about like right there and then I'll have easy access with the microphone. All right, so there's my setup for the MXT575 GMRS mobile radio from Midland. And as you can see now, I have the uh, microphone cable coming out from the bottom right corner. It's a very, very snug fit, but I made sure there was no pinches um, where the jack is into the radio. But I'm pretty happy with how slim and everything hides away so that all you need is just this microphone. And then now I have some room elsewhere where I can probably tuck away a ham amateur radio. And then as you can see, I got the wire, the power wire that goes to the MXT. I'm gonna tighten this up so that it hides underneath there perfectly. And I have it coming out through under here and out to the door. Then let me show you guys how I have this set up here. Comes up and out through here into the engine compartment. And here I have a nice ground lug. And then what's really neat is that I have this all plugged into the accessory switch fuse here. So you can get one of these little pigtails off Amazon and make it look real nice. And so the radio only comes on when I turn the key on and then it goes off automatically when I turn the key off. If I wanna use it with the engine off, then I just put the key in accessory mode and run it from there. So there's the setup here and the completed wiring for the MXT 575 from Midland.